Hey everybody, welcome to part three of list. In this one, I'm gonna show you the following things. We're gonna look at these functions, len, min, max, sum, and uh, the operators in and not in. And we've actually looked at these briefly, but I'm gonna discuss them more uh, now that we're actually talking about list. And in, you actually see with for loops as well. You see like for i in the range, something like that. All right, so let's look at it with our, our uh, ages here first. So I'm just gonna print these out. Uh, the length method, length function, what it does is tell you how many elements are in your list. So if I run this, I get 10 elements. So we have 10 elements in this list. And that makes sense. If I add another element here, I get 11. And remember, this is the ninth index. If you see nine, the ninth index in a list, it means you have 10 items in a list because it starts at zero. Okay, so length is pretty easy to understand. Uh, the next one is the min. And min will give you the minimum value. So pretty easy, it gives you the minimum value. And max, will give you the maximum value. So these are both pretty easy to understand, min and max. Now, you might be interested to know that these actually will work when you are dealing with arrays that are not necessarily numbers. So for example, if I had a, a list of names, so let's say I have a list of, I got Ted, uh, Lily, Ralph, and Amy. So in this, what do you think is going to be my minimum and what do you think is going to be my maximum? So if you said minimum of Amy and maximum of Ted, because you're using the alphabet, you're just thinking alphabetically, you're actually right. Whoops, let me change this to names. So run this, I get Amy and I get Ted. But the problem comes when we start looking at things that are maybe not all capitalized. So let's say I have Amy here and Ted. Now, if I run this, Lily is actually the minimum and Amy is now the maximum. Even though Amy is a lowercase a, it's still maximum compared to the capital of T. Why is that? Well, that's because of something called ASCII values. So ASCII. Uh, and if you go look in the fundamental section, you'll find a video on ASCII values under under things. I think it's in the section with binary and hexadecimal and stuff like that. So take a look at the ASCII values if you don't know. Otherwise, you can just do a Google search for ASCII chart. So search for an ASCII chart and you'll find a, a chart that shows you a number that's associated to each letter. So take a look at that and see if you can figure out maybe why Amy comes after all of these other. Even though it's a small A and you're thinking as well, a small A is not as big as a, as a big A or a big T in that case. But in actuality, when you're looking at the values of things, you might be a little surprised. So letters, it's not really sorting by the alphabet. It's not sorting by anything like that. So if you put some different characters in here, you know, things like this, you're gonna get Ted is now your minimum value, and Amy is still your maximum value. Maybe if I put a, something like a nine in there. Now Ralph is the maximum value, which is, none of this really makes any sense uh, to you until you go look at that ASCII chart. So I'm gonna back this up uh, and put my capitalized Amy back in here. And let's take a look at some of these other things. So we got sum, sum is pretty obvious what it is. Sum is just going to add everything up. So if I do a sum of the ages, it'll take all of these and it adds it up and it spits you out a number. All right, uh, what happens though if you try to add the names? Well, I said all these letters just are equal to numbers, right? So maybe it'll add them up. Actually, it won't because in this case, it's still thinking these are strings and though min and max will look at the, the values, it doesn't change them into the actual numbers when you do sum. So sum works only on floating point or on integer values. So just keep focused on integer and those when you use sum. Okay, so 
That covers length, minimum, maximum values, and sum. Those are probably the four basic functions you're gonna use, and there are some more details on these. There's different things you can do with min and max. You can actually define your own method that will help you find min and max. So maybe you do want something that sorts alphabetically and sorts correctly alphabetically. Well, you can define your own function that uses min, and then it will sort them alphabetically. And I take a look at the documentation. I'm not gonna get into that because this is a basic video, but if you wanna know more about that, go look at the Python docs and you'll see a lot of good stuff. Okay, let's look at in and not in. So in and not in are, as we said before, they return a true or false value. So if I say uh, 14 in ages, well, there is a value 14 in ages. And if I do this, it'll say true. But if I say 19, and there's no 19 in here, it will print false. And that works the same way with the strings. If I say uh, Ted in names, it'll say true. But if I say Teddy in names, it says false. Okay, so in and not in, you've also seen them, for example, in 4i in range 0 to 10 and then you can print i. Okay, so this is the same thing, but it's it's not testing a true or false value actually in this. It is testing a true or false value in this case, but it's also incrementing uh, through each item using the for loop. So the for is saying, is i in this range of numbers? If it is, I want you to take that number out of the range and print it and then go to the next number. So that's what the four is saying in here. Uh, you can say, you could actually just say, in this case, you could just say is five in range zero to 10. And if you do this, you get true because range is just, five is gonna be in that range. But if you say uh, 15 in that range, you're gonna get false. Okay, so the in works in the same way. You can also say, 15 not in the range, and that is true because 15 is not in the range there. I could also say, coming back here, I could say, uh, let's say I change the name to Liliana, not in names. And that's also true because Liliana is not in the list of the names here. But if I asked you to say Lily not in the names, you get false because Lily is in the names of the list. All right, so in and not in are very useful when you want to determine if something is in a list of numbers or in a range of numbers, okay? Or a range of values of any sort, really. Okay, so those are the basics, the four here and these two here. You're gonna use them a whole bunch from this point on. Uh, in the next video, I'm gonna show you uh, some more ways to manipulate list by uh, using different methods that are actually attached to the list type. And then after that, we'll splice some list up and then I'll do a bunch of examples with list because list are actually a really complicated subject and there's a lot of things that you can do with them. Okay, so I will see you in the next video when we talk about some list methods.